Do you find the topic of Azure service principles confusing for you? Well, you're not alone. This is one of the most confusing topics I came across when I first started my Azure journey. And the whole purpose behind this video is to eradicate all those confusions and explain this concept as simple as I can. So with that being said, let's just get into the video and hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so let's start with the fundamentals. And if you know my style of teaching, I like to take a step back and explain the fundamentals before I actually explain the thing that actually made this uh, uh, video. So let me start by explaining what is authentication and authorization. So authentication is essentially proving who you are, while authorization proves what access you have. Okay. So let me give you a hotel analogy. So when you check in into a hotel, you have to first obviously prove who you are, and that can be in a form of passport, or you can give them your ID. And then once you prove who you are, you will get back the key to your hotel room. And that key to your hotel room is essentially the authorization part, which actually shows what access you have, which is that specific room that is assigned to the key. So you don't have access to all the hotel rooms, it's just to this specific uh, uh, room. And if I explain that in a diagram in the real IT world, essentially, when you log into, let's say, the uh, Azure portal, okay, what happens is that you as the user would obviously provide your credentials in the form of username and password to Azure Active Directory. And then Azure Active Directory, once it checks your credentials and proves obviously that you provided the right uh, credentials, it will give you back what is known as a token, which is essentially a series of strings. Okay, And that token essentially represents the authorization part. So that token itself contains information on what access level do you have. In this case, what access level do you have on the subscription? So what happens is you would provide your credentials in the form of username and password. Azure Active Directory checks that, gives you back a token that has information on what access do you have. And then the Azure portal will actually use that access token to access Azure resources. For example, in this case, it's a storage account. In this case, it's just a, a, a SQL a VM. So anytime you're doing anything on Azure, you are essentially leveraging this token, which proves what access level you have. So this is the authorization part. Giving the username and password is the authentication part. Getting back the token is the authorization part, which you have to use whenever you are accessing Azure resources. And I can actually prove to you that my Azure portal is actually using that token to perform specific operations on Azure. So as you can see, I have my developer tools tab open. And if I click any operation, let's say I click refresh in this case, I can open this specific uh, API call operation. Uh, and if I go to the actual payload, I can see the actual requests in this case. So if I go to the uh, uh, requests, I can see this is the actual uh, um, request that I made. But if I actually expand the headers section, I can see under the authorization header, this is the token that I am actually using to essentially prove that I have the sufficient access level to refresh the list of extensions. So as you can see, my Azure portal is using this token behind the scenes. And of course, in order for all of that to happen, my user should be obviously registered on Azure Active Directory. Okay. Otherwise, obviously, Azure Active Directory cannot prove my identity and give me back that token that I can then use to perform certain operations on Azure. And the example I have gone through is known as a user principle. And as a user principle, this is when a user is the entity that is performing a certain operation on Azure. Okay, And the simplest example is whenever you create a virtual machine on Azure. This is known as a user principle, and this is what we've always been used to. However, with a service principle, this is when a service slash application is the entity that is performing a certain operation on Azure. Okay, so just like a user can essentially perform operations on Azure, we also sometimes need applications to perform those operations. And the simplest example is a PowerShell script that stops Azure virtual machines at a certain time. That script itself, essentially this file, 
also has to prove to Azure Active Directory, it has to prove its identity so that it can get back this token that it will then use to stop those Azure virtual machines. Sometimes it's very easy to visualize this with a, with a user, but it's a bit more tricky to visualize it with an application. But again, sometimes an application also needs to prove its identity in order to perform operations on Azure resources. And in this example, it's a simple one, which is essentially a PowerShell script that maybe runs at night and it stops virtual machines uh, uh, to save costs. And if I go through a diagram explaining that, essentially it's almost exactly the same as the user principle. So in this case, I have my PowerShell uh, script and it will provide its credentials to Azure Active Directory. Now, in this example, the credentials are known as client ID and client secrets. So not username and password in the user principle example. Once Azure Active Directory checks the client ID and client secrets, and assuming they are correct, it will give back a token to your PowerShell script and your PowerShell script will actually use that token to perform operations on Azure, whether that's stopping uh, virtual machines, whether that's leading from a storage account, etc. And I actually have a PowerShell script example that stops an Azure virtual machine. Okay, so I'm giving you a service principle example. So the first thing I have to do is I would have to define the application ID, which I will explain in a bit. Uh, then I would actually define the password. In this case, it's actually the client secret. I'm calling it uh, a password. Uh, and then I would create the credential object. And then after that, I need to define the Azure tenant ID and then the subscription uh, information along with the resource group and resource name. And then after that, I will call the command connect az account and pass my credentials to that command okay and then after that azure ad will check my credentials and then will give me back an access token which is then used as part of the stop az vm command behind the scenes okay so if i click on play in this case i can see that the operation has succeeded okay and it succeeded because i successfully authenticated to Azure Active Directory by calling the connect AZ account uh, uh, command and passing my correct credentials, okay? And then Azure, uh, and then uh, my PowerShell script will actually use that token behind the scenes of calling this stop AZ VM, okay? Because if it did not provide the token, then it will get a, a, a an access denied error, okay? Which did not happen. So my PowerShell script is actually using the token behind the scenes when it's calling this stop AZ VM command. Now, obviously for all of that to work, just like with a user principle where you your user would actually have to be enrolled in your Active Directory, you also need to register that application and Active Directory. Just like you would register a user, you would also have to register that application in Active Directory, which I have done in advance. So if I click on that, this is where I've actually gotten my information. So I got the tenant ID from here and also got my application or client ID. And then under the certificates and secrets uh, uh, section, if I click on that, this is where I got my client secret, which I used in my PowerShell script as a form of credentials, which I passed to the connect AZ VM command. And then Azure Active Directory checked my credentials and gave my PowerShell script a token that it will then use to stop a virtual machine. And in addition to what I have explained previously with registering your uh, um, application in Azure Active Directory, you would also have to give this application or this service principle the relevant permissions that will allow it to actually stop this virtual machine, okay? So if I go to access um, uh, control, I need to assign this application the relevant permissions to allow it to stop the virtual machine. Just like how I would assign the relevant permissions to a user, I need to assign the relevant permissions to this application in order to stop the virtual machine. In this example, the role is the contributor role. Now, Last but not least, I'm going to actually go through a user principle example using PowerShell script. Okay, I hope I won't confuse you, but I think this will make the concept uh, a lot more clearer. So uh, in this case, I've changed a few things in the uh, 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 script. Essentially, uh, in this case, if I click on run, notice that in this script, it's actually prompting me as the user to provide my credentials and sign in. Okay, so if I successfully authenticate, 
And as you can see, the operation has succeeded. And you might ask, okay, what is the difference between uh, this and the previous example I have given? Well, for this example, this is still known as a user principle because I, as a user, I'm the one who provided the credentials to Azure Active Directory, okay, by forcing PowerShell to actually prompt me to provide them. And then Azure Active Directory checked my credentials and gave the PowerShell script and token. Okay, and then my PowerShell script again used the token to perform this specific operation. With the previous example, it is the application that provided the credentials because I, as a user, did not have to manually type my username and password. So that was considered a service principle because it was the application that proved its identity. In this case, the application did not prove its identity. I am the one who proved the identity by providing my relevant uh, 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 credentials. So essentially, in this case, the PowerShell script is actually using my credentials and using my uh, um, access uh, um, information to perform this specific uh, uh, VM operation. And by the way, this is exactly the same as what you would do in an Azure portal. The only difference here is that the client is different, but essentially everything is the same. In the Azure portal, you are still prompted to provide your credentials so you would log in and then you would get back an access token this is exactly the same scenario but in this example we are using a different client which is a powershell script